Good morning, Mr. Jones. Good morning, Miss Smith. I have some questions about accessibility in online courses, and I think you can guide me. My first question is, is my site required to be accessible? Yes. Both federal and state law require institutions of higher learning to provide accessible web pages. I see. Why should I make my page accessible? There are many reasons why your website should be accessible. Could you mention some of them? Sure. One is that it is easy to do. It is very simple to re-examine a website and include many elements that will immediately make the site more accessible. Often this does not require changing the visual appearance or design of the site. So this would make a difference for learners? Yes. Making your website work for everyone can make a huge difference to users with disabilities. Making an inaccessible website means that a potential customer, prospective student, faculty member, etc. might not be able to get the information you are trying to share. You are posting information on your website with the intent of sharing information, so why would you make it impossible for visitors to use it? Yes, you are right. My concern is, would my course look different? It won't look different. Making simple changes is often enough to make a site accessible without changing its appearance. Well, those sound like good reasons. I agree, and also it's the law. Web accessibility is something to take seriously. For example, the nationwide retailer Target was sued by the National Foundation for the Blind because their website was found to be not accessible. I have another question. What is the cost of developing accessible sites? That's a good question. The cost associated with making websites accessible is a concern to all departments on campus. However, the cost is generally minimal if accessibility principles are incorporated into the site from the beginning. Retrofitting, on the other hand, is far more expensive and time-consuming. What is the key to making a site accessible? The most important thing to understand is that people use the web in very different ways. A site should therefore present information in a way that people can access it regardless of what kind of hardware or software they are using, and regardless of how they navigate through a site. Web designers cannot assume that everyone uses the same kinds of devices the same way. What are common accessibility mistakes? While certainly not an exhaustive list, the following is representative of many common accessibility mistakes. Note that many, if not most, of these can be found in fixed by writing your web pages in XHTML and running them through an HTML validator. I am not familiar with HTML, but I would like to know what I should care for. Okay, these are common accessibility mistakes you should care for. 1. Images without alternative text. 2. Lack of alternative text for image and map hotspots. 3. Audio or video without captions or transcripts. 4. Lack of alternative information for users who can't access frames or scripts. 5. Tables that are difficult to decipher when linearized. 6. Sites where color is the only way to distinguish elements, or with poor color contrast. 7. Fonts that are fixed sized. Fonts should be relatively sized in a CSS. 8. Form fields that are not properly labeled. And 9. Pages with long navigation menus without a skip navigation link. I hadn't thought about those issues. Tell me, how many people are actually affected? The percentage of people with disabilities is between 10% and 20%. Not. All disabilities affect access to information technologies such as the web, but many do. Something else to keep in mind. For people with disabilities, online access is sometimes even more critical than for the general population, who may have an easier time accessing traditional sources of information. Yes, I can see that, and that is the reason I came to ask you these questions. Thanks so much for the information. I will start to plan for accessibility in my online course. You are welcome, and I am glad I can help.